Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And in this video we're going to continue to work on the tower access and the bathroom. The first thing we're going to do in this episode is to erect this cellar concrete wall all the way up to the rafters and we have the cellar concrete blocks right here and we're going to glue them onto the existing blocks and then lock them into the wall with some special plugs and we'll make it all the way up to the rafters. So the first thing will be of course to cut out some areas where these beams are because they stick out and then once that is done we can glue them in place and I will do all these blocks in one go first because that makes it easier. So now it's time to put these cellar concrete blocks together and for that you're going to need some glue. Now there's a couple of options here. You could use foam based glue. This is very handy, very quick. You don't have to worry about preparing your glue. I don't know if it's as good as cement based glue because this glue you have to mix with water. You know, It's a little bit more work but I do believe that the cement based glue is a lot stronger at the end. I've done the test in the past and fortunately I don't have that video anymore where I glued two cellar concrete blocks together with foam and two pieces with uh, water-based uh, cement glue. I let it dry for a couple of weeks and then I pushed it apart and I noticed that the foam-based glue breaks in the foam layer whereas the cement-based glue actually breaks inside the cellar con concrete. So that tells me that the adhesion is much stronger of uh, the water-based glue. Anyhow, um, I'm interested to hear your comments because I'm sure you might have done something similar before and I really would like to hear your experience because there's different schools of thought here and I don't think there's any conclusive answer to this. But I'm going to use water-based glue. I don't want to make too much, I can always make some extra. be a little bit more thick. I think this is about right. Let's see. That's good. And that's all there is to it.
This is a pretty handy tool to put the glue up. The first layer of cellular blocks is now glued, so now it's time to lock it to the outer wall and therefore I'm using these uh, rods uh, or hooks that actually are going inside the outer wall and then they rest with a little hook onto the cellular concrete and that way you can secure the inner wall with the outer wall. I'm using about every two layers of cellular concrete blocks, a layer of these hooks about every 45 to 50 centimeters into the wall and that makes it very strong. So let's start drilling. I just want to scrape it out a bit where it's going to go because otherwise this is too high up for the glue. You can already see that this block was just glued a few minutes ago. It's already pretty rigid. And the sides we're going to fill up with expanding foam. The next step is to insulate the roof. And for that I'm going to use these insulation panels that are one side coated with aluminum. And in between you have this foam or this polystyrene foam. And I can actually place these panels in between the rafters or on top of the rafters. The spacing of the rafters is not optimum for this panel as you can see so you're always going to have a bit of loss. So therefore it may be a lot better to place them on top of the rafters. And I have another good reason why I want to place this on top of the rafters. And the reason for that is that the tiles that I have on the outside of the roof are very old clay types as you can see here. And they don't really close 100% as you can see. They have no really grooves that interlock. They have an overlap, yes, but you always have some small gaps. So if you have snow in the winter and it blows or you have a heavy rain, you're always going to have a little bit of humidity coming through those tiles, through these little gaps. But it also dries up very quickly. And that is why you find this gray stuff behind me here, which is actually a roof under those tiles. And that board is very strong, but it's breathing. It lets humidity through. So it's important that all this can dry up properly. Now, if I was to put my insulation against this board, I would create kind of a humid area, which I don't want to have really. I want it to breathe. But if I place my insulation panel on the rafters on the inside, then I don't have that issue. This whole area behind it can actually be ventilated and breathe. And that's important to maintain the quality of the wood, to maintain the health of the wood. Because otherwise you're going to create mold and that's something I don't want to get. So that's the reason I'm going to put the insulation on the inside. Now the insulation I'm going to put up is about 10 centimeters thick. So that should be good for a value of R4. It's just on the edge, I know, but this of course is not the outer wall because here we go going to erect another wall and I'll explain you that later. But now, first of all, let's start installing that in those insulation panels. And therefore, I'm going to need some long screws and some big washers to hold it against the rafters. So these are the screws that will be going through the insulation panels and they are fairly long, but that's because of the panels are fairly thick. And these are the big washers that will hold up these panels. 
so the screws will go through it and that way we will have a very solid fix to the rafter. I'm going to leave a little gap at the end here so I can actually put some foam up. Alright, so I got a longer screw now. That should be better. Let's do the next panel. Now you might notice that we have not fully completed the insulation panels all the way to the top of that top beam there. And there's a very good reason for that. And the reason for that is that I still need to install an inner wall here. And this inner wall here will be the back side of the shower, but it also be the back side of a cabinet which will be sitting here. Now obviously I have made a floor plan for the bathroom. And you always should because it's not that big. It's 2 meters 60 by 2 meters 50. So I have to be very careful where I place things. So the toilet will be on that side, the cabinet will be on this side, and it's a cabinet with a sink inside, and then the shower, which is a walk-in shower, will be going right here. So I need to have an absolute straight wall here. I can't move more backwards because the shower is having a glass panel on the side, which is two meters high and one meter 40 long. Now that's gonna sit on the base of the shower, that means that the base of the shower has to be absolutely level together with the walls on the side and the back wall. So I need to have here 90 degrees. That's very important. And that is why I already have installed this beam here, which is going to support that inner wall. Now I know in the back, I'm going to lose some space, right? I'm going to lose 80 centimeters, but it's all right. I can use this area as a technical area where I can have access to. So if the cabinet is going here with the sink on top, I can arrange it in such a way that through the cabinet, if ever necessary, I can take the drawers out and I can get to the back and I can actually get to this technical room here where all the plumbing will be. Because sometimes you may have tubes on your plumbing that lock up. So I'm going to have an inspection panel on those tubes so I can get to it. I don't like to cover up too many things. I like to be able to get to things when things go wrong. Anyway, what I have done so far is then pre-position this wooden beam here on which we're now going to create a frame with wood so we can actually put then the OSB panels on that and then finally the drywall and of course the building board where the shower is. Uh, but to do so, you've got to make sure it's absolutely right. Now, to make sure that it's vert vertically right, I'm using a plumb. And then for making sure that the floor is in a 90 degree angle with all the walls for the shower, I'm using my laser light. So you really need to plan a little bit. You need to work out where things go and you need really to make sure that everything is absolutely level. So let's have a look. So I've placed the laser in such a way that the laser beam follows this beam here. And then I'll check on my back wall where that ends up. And then we're going to turn on the horizontal laser as well. And then we can actually see uh, how level everything is. So let's have a quick look on how that looks like. All right, so we've got the vertical beam up. Now let's do the horizontal. 
And now we should be able to measure from the top of the OSB panel to the horizontal laser beam what that distance is, and it better be the same on both sides. To make sure that the back wall is absolutely vertical, I'm using a plumb weight. So I've cut the first stud to length, and now we should be able to install that and make sure it goes absolutely level. So now let's place it level and put some marks up. All right, that should be good. And vertical. So what I'm putting up now is a little block in the back so I can uh, screw down the stud towards that block. All right. Okay, and that is pretty good and solid. I might still put a big screw through the bottom of this plank, which I can do now. So let me go and get one. All right, this is good. By now I have actually two studs in place, one on the left and one on the right, and both are now absolutely level with the floor and aligned. So now I'm going to span a uh, string from one side to the other side, and that will allow me to install the other studs exactly at the right spot, so they are all aligned. Um, I don't need to do it on the bottom, because on the bottom we actually have the plank which is making the uh, line for me. All right. Now let's see if we are not too close to this beam here. No, we are good. All right. So that should be it. So now I can prepare the other studs and then we should be good to go. So the frame is now in place and it's very sturdy. It's going to carry an OSB panel and then on top of that it will carry here um, waterproof drywall and over here where the shower will be will install this building board as I've shown you in a previous video. I also filled up the gaps uh, with this foam so we have good insulation. We still have to do a bit of, little bit of work here on the top but that's what we will do once I, the OSB panels are in on the floor. Now, talking about OSB panels on the floor, I still need to insulate the lower lane floor all the way below, below here. But before I do so, I'm going to put up the cold and hot water pipes coming up on the back of the wall there. And then I'll install a collector, and then we should be good to insulate that floor. So, but first of all, a little lunch. The next thing is to bring up the cold and hot water from downstairs. And for that, I'm using these special tubes. These are multi-layered tubes, and I'll give you a close-up in a few minutes. We will terminate those on these distributors, and that's the cold distributor. I have three outlets, uh, one for the toilet, one for the shower, and one for the sink. And then we have the entrance into that. Now, this one has an insulated connector. You might not need this, but that's all I had available to me. For the cold, hot water, we're doing exactly the same, uh, but now I only have the shower and the sink. That's all I need, and then the input to that. 
and these tubes will connect to those two distributors which will be mounted on the back wall and therefore you're going to need a couple of connectors to mount these distributors now from those distributors I can then depart to the shower to the sink and to the toilet but that's for the next video we also need to drill a couple of holes in the floor and therefore I'm using this very special white kind of cutting saw uh, just to the right size so I can fit the tube through and of course you're going to need a couple of additional tools this tool right here is what you use to cut off actually the tubing very handy tool and I really recommend it that you use this um, without it it's going to be a little bit more difficult because those tubes are fairly soft and they will deform even with those pliers so if they deform you have to recalibrate the inside of the tube and therefore you have this kind of a tool you just put it inside the tube and then you turn it until you have the right size it comes in multiple sizes I'm using 16 millimeter tube uh, but again uh, depending on how much volume you're gonna need of water uh, you might go for a larger size or a smaller size so without any further ado let me just show you now how these multi-layer tubes look like how you can cut them how you can calibrate them and then we're gonna start to install things so here we have that tube and cutting it off is pretty easy with this tool you just squeeze it through that's it now it will be deformed now it's time to use the calibration tool you look for the right size and then you're trying to squeeze it in there and you push it all the way to the end and once that is done you can take it out and now your tube is actually calibrated and now you can fit the connector to it there's two types of connectors there's the one that clamps on with a special pliers I don't have those pliers they are quite expensive but the connectors are cheap you can also use other connectors with a big bolt and you use a wrench to lock it that's what I'm going to use the connectors are a bit more expensive but if you don't need to do a lot of uh, plumbing then you don't need those expensive pliers the tube that I'm using is called Alpax and they come in different sizes um, I do like this tube because it's very bendable but again I guess there are other brands on the market and that's entirely up to you whatever you want to use but I do like these tubes and I have a good experience with them it used to be that tubes came in two different types those for hot and cold water uh, as one just for plumbing and then there was another type of tube that would come along for your central heating I think nowadays it's the same for both I mentioned that these tubes are multi-layered and as you can see here the outer tube is kind of a plastic tube then you have an aluminum tube inside and then the inner tube is again kind of a plastic tube and it's the aluminum part that actually makes this tube very bendable and it keeps its bend or its form whenever you bend it into a certain position but you will have to use a spring inside and respect the radius so this is the kind of bit I'm using to drill the holes in the planks That's number one. All right. I'm going to go downstairs so I can feed the two tubes through the holes. So we have one installed. Now we'll install the second one. And these are actually collectors or distributors. And I have one for cold and one for warm water. This guy is supposed to go in here and then we can lock it up but before I do so I will connect the pipes to it 
as I said before, um, this is a isolating connection, which you don't really need, but um, that doesn't seal off by itself. So you have to put some Teflon on this thread. Uh, so if you put Teflon on, you got to make sure you do it in the right direction. So in the way you're turning things on, not the other direction, otherwise it's just going to come off. And in case you don't know what Teflon is, uh, that's this kind of white stuff that we have here. As you can see, I'm putting it on the way we're going to turn on that knob or that uh, connector. Right? So, clockwise. If you go anti-clockwise, you will have an issue. And don't be afraid to put quite a bit on, because you don't want this to leak. Now, the good thing about this place is that I will be able to check it once I would put the water pressure up, because this space here in the back is going to be an open space for that. So, All right, and I'm going to use a wrench to do that. Now, one thing about Teflon is never turn it backwards, because if, if you loosen it up, it's going to leak. So you could all, only turn in one direction. All right, so that should be good enough. So now this guy will go on the top of the tube, and therefore I will need to take my tape off, because I put some tape up while I was putting the tubes uh, through the holes, so it didn't leak. I need to calibrate this tube. Now, you might see that the red part here is not coming all the way to the connector. It is not necessary. Um, this is great stuff if you put it into the walls, but otherwise it's not really needed. But still, uh, I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter, something like this. So now I'm going to calibrate this. First I use a small one so I can get a bit of the rounding back in. Now I'm going to use the normal size. All right. Now that should be good enough. And now I should be able to put this connector up. Um, okay, so I'm going to slide it over. And there's a ring. That ring is a bit tough sometimes to get on. Uh, let's see. Let me... All right. Right. And often the ring is a bit difficult to get on in the beginning because, because I calibrated the tube, it's a bit expanded, right? All right. So now. Uh, this is the part that goes inside. There we go. And you're going to make sure it's all the way to the end. And now we can start to connect things up. So this is going to go to the bottom side of this distributor. Now, first of all, I'm going to put the distributor into place. I don't know if you noticed it, but these brackets that I'm using, they have kind of an insulation. So the brass doesn't touch the uh, metal part because that would make a galvanic element. So that's why they have insulation in the middle. Okay. First, the big uh, nut or whatever you want to call it. Then this copper ring, which is always a little bit more tricky to put up, but sometimes it goes smooth, other times it's a bit more difficult. All right. And then the final piece that goes in. Make sure it's all the way at the end. And now we can hook all this up.
hand tight first. All right, and that should be it. All right, so here we go. Cold and hot water ready to be connected towards the shower and the sink whenever we get to that point. So now it's time to put the insulation onto that ceiling. And that ceiling is actually uh, above the entrance of the house, of this old house. And the insulation that I'm going to put up is about 18 centimeters. So it's quite thick with an aluminum coating on the left and on the right. Um, I'm not going to show you guys uh, on how I'm placing all these panels. It's just about a panel of uh, five to six, I think. And then uh, we should be good to go tomorrow on the next step where we're going to install the OSB panels and start working with the boards and so on. There's still a lot of work to be done, but hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. So let me carry on and then I'll see you in my next video.